What's up guys, Brian and Darcy here from Darcy's Offshore. In today's fishing video, we go offshore Palm Beach Inlet and we go deep sea fishing for Barracuda on Big Rex. Yes. After that, we're gonna show you how to cook and clean this delicious fish so you don't get toxic food poisoning. And then you're gonna add this wonderful fish to your table as well. Excellent table fare. Delicious. <laughs> Today I am fishing with fans on a charter and we are fishing a wreck and we just hooked a really nice fish. Nice. Damn, Solid fish. fish right there. Nice job. Yeah, First fish in the boat. Heck yeah. That's exactly what we want. Good job, man. Nice. Go, Susan. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Another nice Cuda. Wow. Still fishing this particular wreck. And this is a common spot a lot of anglers know of, but basically it's a 330 foot ferry down there full of fish. And we're marking them on the depth finder. So now it's my turn to catch a fish and we have switched it up with a live blue runner down there. And we are using straight to a fluorocarbon leader with no wire. The last two sharp toothy barracudas that came in the boat were on wire. So now we're just gonna have to see what happens. We might get cut off, but that's part of the game but also that opens up our options to better bites from other species as well. African pompano to cobia to amberjacks. There's just a lot of things holding on these types of structures. So you just never know what you can catch. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Fish on. There you go, good job. Here, I don't think this guy is just going to put this up. Gone. I was thinking that was like a juicy cake, though. Fish on. Fish coming in. Felt that go down there. Got them out of the wreck. That's the most important part when you're wreck fishing is to get that fish up as soon as possible away from it so they don't wrap you up in the structure. But it's coming up now. Got the weight. We're close. Looks like it's a cuda. It's a cuda. Yup. He looks like he is. All right. That's the third cuda of the day in the boat. Seems to be the smallest one of the day and smaller the better as far as eating cuda goes. So we are gonna get them measured on the tape here. 34 inches to the fork, and you're allowed to keep one above 30, 36 inches to the fork. So that guy is a legal fish. Who's gonna hook? You can, Susan, go, Susan, go, go. All right. That's a nice eating cooter right there. That big? You look big for me, no? That's the nice eating cooter right there. I would eat that cooter. I would not. I would not be scared to eat that cooter. All right, just pulled out the uh, kingfish rig with my bubble blade pliers, and we are going to eat up this bad boy. He's delicious. Going in the in the ice box. Teeth are insane. Do not want to get in a fight with that thing. <laughs> Gotta have an ice cold land shark back at the dock. That always makes you feel better. All right, so I got my cuda here. Nice size cuda. I honestly wouldn't keep them much bigger than this. And the reason being is because cudas actually have something in their meat that accumulates over time that is called signatera. And uh, signatera is a big no-no for humans. and it, will affect you the rest of your life. So bigger fish have more amounts of signatera, but this smaller fish more than likely doesn't have it. And I've also grown up catching and eating barracuda with my father. Um, so this is a really great fish to eat. Super white, fresh meat. I'm using my bubble blade knife, my eight inch whiffy, or bubba knife um, to fillet this guy open. And a nice sharp knife is key here. 
So I'm just basically just working that clay off the backbone here and gonna take it right off and keep the innards intact. Try to keep the rib bones on the actual fish so that way it doesn't end up in my filet. But I'm just running it right over and I love the whiffy because I love how it bends and that way I can get in there really good. For other people, you can use a stiff knife, but I prefer a flexible knife like this one. So we just got that filet off nice and easy, no problem. And you can check out that meat right there, but it looks awesome, amazing. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side of this fish as well to get the other half off, but I'm just gonna show you how I take the skin off real quick. And we're just gonna go ahead and use the same knife. Keep it like close to your body as possible. And I'm left-handed, so this might look weird to you guys, but sorry. <laughs> but I like to put my finger right here on the, on the actual skin and kind of just keep the knife as close to you as possible and work it all the way down as you go at a 45 degree angle. Okay. Now we got our nice piece of barracuda meat right there. Check that out, looks amazing. I'm probably just gonna end up cleaning up this bloodline at home, but you can honestly just get a little piece of this bloodline out. You don't necessarily need to eat that. It's gonna be very fishy. So that is a beautiful piece of barracuda meat that we are gonna devour later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and fillet up this other side. I'm gonna save the carcass actually for crab trap bait. Always can reuse that stuff. Carcasses are awesome. And I'm gonna put this right on ice because it's starting to get warm in this hot sun. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Puddin. I know it's your favorite part of the show. We're just gonna go no hat today. You haven't seen me with no hat, I don't, I don't think ever. I just got a haircut today. Um, so I figured I'd let you guys see what's going on up here. Today we we're cooking that barracuda. It's gonna be delicious. And we're gonna be cooking it, doing something called seasoned barracuda lisa, all right? Uh, it's basically vegetables, and then we're gonna put the fish on top of the vegetables in this big pan, and it's gonna steam it. And we're gonna make a little bit of a sauce with this bouillon, which I've been over here working. Oh, because <laughs> that looks like it might be done. The first thing about barracuda, at least people in the United States, they think it's a trash fish. I'm just cutting up some onion here for our, our part of our vegetables and our thing. Um, but you know, trash fish, people always say, oh, is that a trash fish? Can you eat it? Like bonita or false albies, you call them. Also, uh, jack crevals. You know, people in different countries eat different things, you know. Uh, Darcy grew up eating barracuda with her family. You know, she's third generation Miami. They eat barracuda all the time. Darcy's like, no big deal, right? So uh, people eat barracudas over in the Bahamas, they eat them all the time. You know, Americans, maybe not so much. But let me tell you, I've had barracuda uh, a couple times, and, and it's real good. Uh, but what's the, what's the trouble with them is, is of course you've all heard of, of the Ciguatera, or maybe you haven't. But Ciguatera is, I guess, a parasite, and and you get it from from the reefs, okay? And the fish, uh, reef fish, eat other reef fish, and they get Ciguatera. It builds up in the fish's bodies, okay? So over time that happens. So the bigger the fish, the more Ciguatera. So your big barracudas, uh, grouper, those kind of things they're gonna get Ciguatera. So, in our opinion, and I'm not a medical professional, you gotta make your own choices on this, of course, uh, we eat small barracudas. They have not had a long enough life to get uh, a lot of Ciguatera built up in them. I like to say five pounds and under. And we caught this barracuda and I was like, oh, you know, it's a little marginal. Darcy was like, let's eat it. <laughs> so, we're having the barracuda. Getting back to the recipe. The first thing you do is cook the vegetables in butter. We change the vegetables up a little bit because we're gonna use whatever vegetables we feel like and whatever we have in the refrigerator, all right? Start with carrots and asparagus. So I put those in first, cook them a little bit because you know those are a bit of a harder, a little bit denser vegetable, especially the carrots, cook those a little longer, all right? Now, I'm gonna add onion. Gotta have onion. The sizzle loves onion, the Arrow Hills love onion. Another thing they love is garlic. So if I get it on my bubble blade, I'm gonna put some garlic in there. The more garlic, the better. Let's throw that up a little bit. Now, I'm gonna throw in this broccoli. Darcy's just getting ready. She'll be out here in a minute. Don't worry. You're not gonna be stuck with me for this entire thing. Looking good. 
Look who's back, guys. I'm here. The most beautiful girl in the whole wide world. <laughs> all right, so the, the vegetables are all cooked. It smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it. it does smell good. She's not talking about me, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, so sizzle. We're gonna put in some more ingredients, and we're gonna put the we're gonna put the recipe in the comments below. No, I mean in the description, description box below. Description box below. All right. I just took a picture of it. All right. So we're gonna add some uh, chicken stock, which I prepared earlier. We got some wine. What kind of wine, you ask? Box wine. Only the best wine for our sizzle. <laughs> so how long has it been in the refrigerator, our sizzle? I don't know. We literally only use it for cooking fish. Yes, all right. Because we drink lancho. Of course. Yeah. Right. And some parsley. I told them, Dar Sizzle, about what a redneck you were eating barracuda your whole life. Not a redneck, it's good. <laughs> exactly. That's what a redneck would say. All right. Well, it looks good. Looks good. And let's close it up. And we'll be back when it's a little flaky. All right, guys, I think it's done. I poked it with a fork, and the fork goes all the way through it. That usually means there's no flesh in the middle. And it's also nice and flaky, like they said. So I'm pretty sure that's done. So I'm gonna take the fish off. Now I'm gonna attempt to thicken up that sauce with this butter flour mixture they told me to use. I think it's done. It's definitely thickened up. It looks, I don't know, I mean, it came out to be a little bit of a, a goulashy. Maybe the broccoli, maybe I cooked the asparagus too long. But I did taste it, it tastes delicious. And we're just gonna put it right over our fish here. Maybe I'll use this spatula. I mean, it is good. It's got a ton of butter in it, so we can't go wrong with that. All right, Dar Sizzle. Here's your fork. All right, you wanna go first? Or you want me to go first? We'll go together. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Really yummy. That was awesome. Brian always cooks the fish perfectly. I am good at that. But it's really fish, good. It's delicious. The fish is really comparable to like the regular snapper and stuff that we eat on a regular basis. So, barracuda, you can't go wrong with that. Look how white. Super, super yummy. I mean, the vegetables didn't come out as pretty as I would have liked, but. Again, with it's vegetables and butter and asparagus and broccoli. Yeah, it just looks like the asparagus became mush. Yeah, maybe. But Might cook that too long. Doesn't matter because it's all going in your belly, so it doesn't really <laughs> matter. It's all going in the same spot. There's a lot of butter in it. It tastes delicious. But it's awesome. I don't really taste the chicken stock or whatever. So as always, if you have any questions yep. or about anything, about this meal or fishing or anything, or about us, put it in comments uh, down below. I'll put another video, another nice video, catch and cook up here. Maybe a barracuda video. We'll see. Yeah, with the grape jelly. Oh, oh, my, oh my left shoulder. Oh, Check it out. We'll put the barracuda on grape jelly video. That's with your dad, right? Yeah. So that's awesome. And until next time, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Can I get a kiss? <laughs>